Hey, it's Mike. Let's talk about Reaper. I've been a Reaper user pretty much since I started working with audio. While I've never used Pro Tools, I've seen plenty of people using it on YouTube. One of the features that I've seen in Pro Tools that was always interesting to me is when a user is working in the Arrange view, or whatever it's called in Pro Tools, where you have the track control panel, a listing of your tracks, and no visible mixer, the user would click on one of the tracks and something like a floating fader that's dedicated to that one track would pop up. Today I'd like to try to recreate that in Reaper. Let's take a look. I've got a project open with 10 blank tracks and the mixer docked at the bottom in what I believe may be the default Reaper layout for the mixer. The mixer can be either docked as it is now or floating, and you can also toggle the mixer visibility. In the Pro Tools example I explained in the introduction, the mixer is floating but it's also isolated to a single track. That would suggest that we need to undock our mixer and somehow narrow it down to where it only shows the desired track. Before we start to destroy the beautiful setup that we currently have, it's probably a good idea to save a copy of this layout that we can always recall. We'll go to View, and Screen Sets, Layouts. The default key press for this is Control e Now I've already saved this, but just for the sake of showing you how this is done, go to the Windows tab, select whichever number you'd like, and save. You can give this whatever name you'd like, and be sure to place a check mark on each item that you'd like saved. In this case, my primary concern is the layouts. And with that saved, I can now alter the layout of my mixer and easily be able to recall that default setting. For example, if I were to right-click my mixer and undock it, I can now press F7 to load my default layout, and we're right back where we started. With that in mind, let's first start to build a single fader mixer with no master track. I'll right-click the mixer, and uncheck Dock Mixer in Docker. That gives me my floating mixer, but of course I still have all of my tracks. I also don't want to have the master visible can right click the master track, go up in the menu to master track, and uncheck show in mixer. Now we've got just our individual tracks and no master track. The next thing that I want to do is make sure that I have the mixer set to automatically scroll to the selected track. For example, if I have my window narrowed down, I'd like to be able to click on a track, let's say track 9, and you can see that the mixer scrolls over to that. Right click your mixer, and there's an option to scroll view when tracks activated. Mine's already checkmarked, but of course I just wanted to show you where this setting is. Now I can narrow down my mixer and continue clicking tracks until I get this size just right. That seems about right. I'll test. And as you can see, as I click each of these tracks, my single fader goes right to that track. It still seems like it's just a little bit too wide. It's kind of difficult to get it exactly perfect, but anywhere in the ballpark is sufficient. Next, I think I'd like to make this as small as I can, so I'll resize this a bit further. And that seems about right. Now that we've got that mixer just the way we like it, I can save a new screen set. So I'll go to slot number three, save that, and I'll call it floating single fader, or whatever you'd like to call it. Spelling is important. Underneath the load key, you can see that I can call each of these three scenes by pressing one of the function keys. F7 will load my default layout. F8 will load a floating mixer, and F9 will load the floating single fader that we just created. That's got us close, but I'd like to take it a little bit further. For the next portion, you'll need SWS extensions. If you don't have SWS extensions installed or don't even know what it is, click the link above to learn more. I'd like to change this screen set to where it starts with no mixer at all. To do that, I'll close my mixer and simply save over this again. Now you can easily bring the mixer back by clicking View, Mixer, or whatever key press combination that you have assigned to that. My purpose for wanting to start this with the mixer not visible is so we can create a custom action to make this pop up as we click on a track. So with my screen set saved, I'll go ahead and close this, and now let's start to take a look at cycle actions. Cycle actions allows you to create custom commands in Reaper. The difference between a regular custom action like you might create in the actions list and a cycle action is that cycle actions also allows you to create conditional statements. Once you've got SWS extensions installed, Go to Extensions, and Cycle Action Editor. Now before we get too far into this, I'd like to give a shout out to John Tidy with Reaper Blog for helping me with some syntax errors as I was testing this earlier. So with our Cycle Action Editor open, I'd like to create a new cycle action. Right click in the left pane and choose Add Cycle Action. We'll need to give this a name. I'll call this PT Floating Mixer. The left side shows the names of your existing cycle actions, and on the right side you can stack up commands. From our earlier trials, we know that our mixer is set in a way to where if we click a track, it will automatically scroll to it. I think what I would like to happen is to be able to call this action to make the mixer visible. 
My first command will be to select the track under the mouse cursor. Here we see right click here to add commands. I can right click that and my options are to add, add step, add statement, or add selected action in the actions window. I'll click away from that for now and click action list in the lower left corner. This brings up my action list and I can have these side by side. I'll filter for select, TCP, and we can see SWS select TCP track under mouse cursor. With that highlighted, I can now right click here to add commands and choose add selected action in actions window. So my first action in this cycle action will be to select the TCP track under the mouse cursor. We know that there's an action in the actions list to toggle the visibility of the mixer. We can see the action view toggle mixer visible and we can see the current state is off. Keeping in mind that I saved this particular screen set with the mixer disabled, we need a way to detect the state of the mixer and to turn it on if it's already off. This is where conditional statements comes in. Back in the cycle action editor, I'll right click and go to add statement, F not. This adds two different commands. It adds the if the next action is off and then there is an end of the statement. If I click the end if statement, I can right click and choose insert and that gives me another line to add a command. If I look back at the actions list for my command to toggle the mixer visibility, I can see there's a command ID 40078. Another way to enter commands here is to highlight the left side under command and type in that command ID. Now that I've added 40078, that has added the command view toggle mixer visible. So currently our command would select the track control panel track under the mouse cursor and then it checks to see if the next action is off and then it does nothing. We'll need to add another action to do if this action is off. I can right click view toggle mixer visible, copy, and then right click the end if statement and paste and that places it before it. So now our command reads select track control panel track under mouse cursor and if the mixer visibility is off toggle it to the on state and then stop. Now with our cycle action completed I can close my actions list and apply to save that and we now have a custom cycle action called PT floating mixer. Now we need to find a way to call it. I think I'd like to assign a mouse modifier to call this command so I'll go to options, preferences, and under mouse modifiers let's change our context to track control panel. I like all of my default actions so I think I'll bind it to alt and double click. Underneath behavior double click in the area for alt and choose action list. That will bring up our action list and we can find our new action in here to call. I'll filter for PT float and here's our custom command PT floating mixer. I'll select and close and holding alt and double clicking in the track control panel should open up our floating mixer. Let's apply that and test. I'll hold alt and double click track three and there's our mixer. Now one thing that I don't like about this is it moves it over to the right. It's not that big of a deal. I can easily move my cursor over there, but it would be nice if we could have the mixer move to where our cursor is. We can go back and edit the PT floating mixer cycle action. And let's add another command after the conditional statement. We'll open up the actions list and filter for move active float. We can see plenty of SWS actions here to move the active floating window to mouse cursor with various positions. After testing this a few times, I believe the one that I like the most is horizontal right, vertical middle. So with that selected, I can right click in the cycle action editor and add the selected action in the actions window. I'll apply that and let's close these to test. Now my mixer is still visible, so I'll need to close that to fully test. And now I'll hold alt and double click a track. And my mixer has opened just to the right with the horizontal middle in line with the mouse cursor. Now I can adjust this fader and click on any one with a single left click and the mixer changes to represent whichever track I've clicked. Now one thing I've not been able to work out so far is how to get the mixer to move again while running that same action. If I hold alt and double click on a track with the mixer open, it seems to do nothing but move the focused track in the mixer. So while this is not a perfect setup, it comes pretty close to mimicking the behavior that we saw in Pro Tools. And if I'd like to go back to my default mixer, I can just press F7 on my keyboard and we're right back where we started. I can easily toggle between them with the function keys and call my custom cycle action by holding Alt and double clicking a track. 
Cycle Actions combined with screen sets adds a lot of functionality and customization options to Reaper. I hope this helps. If you like the content you're seeing, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and you can support the channel further by clicking the Buy Me a Coffee or Patreon link below. I like coffee. Also check the link in the description to join us on Discord. See you next time. You can probably start sipping on this coffee at the beginning of the video, it'll be a lot warmer then.